In Health Watch Now, a new report finds that Americans are more likely to die from an opioid overdose than in a car crash. For the first time, the National Safety Council found Americans' chance of dying from an opioid overdose has increased to 1 in 96. So that is compared to 1 in 103 likelihood of dying in a car accident. It's also more likely than dying from a fall, drowning, or gun assault. With us now is Lindsay Volo. She's the Director of Health, Law, and Policy for the Center on Addiction. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Good to be here. So, Lindsay. Staggering numbers, Lindsay. It, it really yeah. is. And I, and I think that, you know, you probably, when you learned this report was out, your reaction was not one of surprise, but one of sort of... You acquiesce. You sort of kind of knew that this was coming. That's right. We've known for a few years that o overdose deaths have been overwhelming other types of preventable deaths like car accidents. Um, it's now the leading cause of death for people under the age of 50. It's bringing our entire national life expectancy down. Um, so unfortunately, you know, this report was not surprising. I think the key finding is that these deaths are preventable. Addiction is a preventable and treatable disease. We're just not doing enough to prevent it or treat it. So I feel like after over the past maybe five years or so, there's been a lot of attention right. uh, placed on opioid addiction. Um, governments are stepping in. It was uh, part of the current president's platform to tackle this. So why are we seeing the number of deaths rising? So I think that we are not seeing strategies on a large enough scale, nor are we seeing a great enough investment in the types of health-based solutions that are going to be required to really um, turn the corner on this. We are seeing some success story stories at the state and local level. And so states and localities are really investing in health-based solutions to treat addiction like the disease that it is, as it is, that it is, are starting to see a leveling off or a maybe a small decline in their overdose numbers. Um, that's certainly not enough. It's encouraging, but there are still far too many people who are dying from this disease. In fact, even one death is too many. Uh, we need to be doing much more to scale up these effective strategies and make a, a greater investment in our solutions to address this issue. Mm. We were talking earlier about how this addiction has happened for so many millions of Americans over the course of time. And my question to you, and I'd like you to share it with our audience, is shouldn't we be going at the source? In other words, it's, uh, this originally started with doctors prescribing an inordinate amount of opioids to, to patients as a sort of a quick fix for people who were suffering from pain or from a variety of issues. And you know, we know that the pharmaceutical companies were part of that uh, challenge. In other words, they were going out there and pushing these drugs on doctors who were then prescribing them um, to patients. What about going after pharmaceutical companies with regulations, with stricter sort of law enforcement? Right, and, and I think that's starting to happen. Um, there is a recognition that uh, opioids were overprescribed, um, and we're, I think we're working towards doing better training and better limits on opioid prescriptions um, to make sure that uh, they're prescribed in, in smaller quantities and to, to the people who really need them to sort of reduce the availability. Um, and so that will certainly help for, for opioid addiction, but we're really in a broader addiction crisis to other substances, so we need to make sure that our going to the source, our prevention strategies are, are broadly focused. We also have cocaine and methamphetamine use that are on the rise, um, and so prevention really has been focused solely on reducing the availability of prescription opioids, but it really needs to be a broader strategy than that. I have so a, I was, I just one question mm -hmm. I have about what you just said. Mm -hmm. Do, if you can't get opioids from a doctor, does that mean you graduate to sort of street uh, drugs? She's your expert. Yeah, I so mean, I'm curious about that. Most people um, who who have uh, end up transitioning to heroin uh, do start with prescription opioids. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, whether or not they're prescription opioids that are prescribed to them or that they get from a friend or family member they find in a home again because you know so many people were prescribed opioids in large quantities um, they, were, they were in a lot of home medicine cabinets. Do they mimic the effects? I mean in other words like what, what would what would if you're addicted to an opioid and you can't get your hands on it what would so heroin. So heroin, fentanyl, right? They have they're all op uh, prescription opioids. They're all the same type of drug, so they all have the same effect on the brain. Um, people will often transition. Opioids cause dependence, um, and so people will become dependent on them. They'll need a higher or stronger dose. They'll also experience withdrawal symptoms um, if they don't use opioids. So often people will transition um, from prescription opioids to heroin uh, when either they need something stronger or it becomes unavailable or simple economics. Um, oftentimes heroin may be cheaper 
cheaper mm -hmm. than prescription opioids. So you guys have been talking about prevention, but this study was about deaths, yes. right? And so there's a difference between, you don't necessarily have to die of your addiction, maybe you can come out of it. Um, and so I wanna ask you about the strategies that you see that work that prevent deaths. I know I live in Philly, mm -hmm. and in Philly, um, anyone can get their hands on Narcan. Yep. They're encouraging just regular citizens to carry mm. the carry the drug right. to help to save lives. I'm wondering what have you seen that works? So we know the recipe to reduce overdose deaths. It's Narcan, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the medication that will reduce an overdose and as you've said can be administered by laypersons and the FDA approved medications for opioid addiction treatment, methadone, buprenorphine, and naltrexone. And so um, states and localities that have made both of those more widely available are seeing a reduction in their overdose deaths. Mm. Um, we've seen it in Hamilton County, Ohio. We've seen it in um, Northern Kentucky and other areas where they're really um, f flooding those areas with treatment, of effective treatment for opioid addiction and naloxone in order to reverse those overdoses. Really it's really key when someone suffers an overdose that they're then connected immediately to treatment. Um, starting treatment in the emergency room is another tactic or providing a peer recovery specialist, people who are in recovery who can help that patient navigate treatment. Simply releasing them from the emergency room with a list of phone numbers to call a treatment center is not enough um, to engage that individual in treatment or to prevent another overdose. Very fascinating. Is it working in Philly? Uh, I don't know what the numbers are. Yeah. I, I think it's. I think they started pushing it maybe in the summertime, encouraging people. And I know a couple of people who who carry it. How do you get your hands on it? You yeah. just ask for it. You, you go to the health department. Yeah. At the health department, mm -hmm. give me some Narcan, and if you see somebody who is in dire straits, you're allowed to administer that yeah. that drug. Yeah. New York City has great training programs as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we would encourage everyone to get trained in carrying naloxone. Lindsay Violo, thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Lindsay. Thank you.